This is just marketing and sales. We are not in real estate. For the people that are kind of getting away with murder in terms of they don't really know what they're doing, but they're able to kind of get away with just some stuff and make some money. Um, this is where the lions are going to start coming out of their cages. And I consider myself a lion, which means this, the market will get more difficult in the near future. It already currently is getting more difficult. And I'll show you some stats to support it. And they don't even support it yet, by the way. I think the people in the business, those that are actively doing deals right now would agree with me, the market has changed. So if you are a wholesaler, your buyers probably aren't buying as high as they used to. They're probably not buying as quick as they used to. And that's because they're not selling their properties as quick as they used to, and they're not selling for as high as they used to. And so I'll show you some of this stuff, but what I'll say is this is the moment that people get to make a decision to actually can win or not, because this is when the lions get out of their cage because they know that this is eating time. Does that make sense? So I just put that up there for fun. You're all over this. Okay, I'll read this to you. I was really hoping it was gonna be big enough for you guys to read it. This came from the MLS this morning, okay? So how many of you guys have access to MLS? So I don't have to technically read it. You can go just look for it yourself. But I wanted to show you what is actually happening right now in the market. This is July. Yep, that was July. <laughs> Um, so what you will see and where I'm going to go with this is, it's not necessarily about these. Oh, look at this a little bit better. So July, and then where do I listing prices? Here's where you're going to see the biggest discrepancy. This is where I want you to focus. Okay. On this, right? Um, the red is active medium price. Yellow is new and then black is sold. So new and sold, you're going to also look at this over here, number of listings, okay? New listings, sold listings. You're also going to look at here, absorption rate. Do you guys understand what that means? How many months on the market? If there was not one more listing put on the market, how many months until they're gone, right? So this would be like 2.4 months, 2.5 months before every listing is sold. Do you guys all good with that? Sold to list ratio, okay? And then again, I want you to focus down here, which is your price volume, right? New sales volume, right? And then days on market, current days on market is realtors. You guys don't understand that, right? All good. So this isn't going to be rocket science to you guys. And I don't think I'm recreating any information you don't know, but if you just watch <laughs> these little areas, I told you to watch that's July, that's October, July, October. July, October, July, October. These are the things that you want to be paying attention to because this will tell you what, and this is only MLS data, meaning the stuff that I do isn't even relative to this. So what does that mean for most people? What does that mean for investors? Stuff's not selling. Not selling. As fast. As fast. So it is currently selling. Yeah. And I will tell you right now, when I run another one next month and I have November's, the data will continue to be larger. These spreads will be larger. I'm currently, again, the data is not going to support this. So I'm going to have to get ahead of this and basically call myself Nostradamus. This is going to get a lot uglier. The data right now is not supporting some massive, but nothing is massive yet. We're just starting to feel the effects and the people that are in the business are starting to feel the effects. We were averaging almost $20,000 for half of this entire year for every wholesale deal we did. Starting the third quarter went down to 15,000. By the end of the third quarter went down to 12,000. We didn't do anything different. Our buyers had to handle their buying differently because the sales of their listed properties were being handled differently. Does that all make sense to you guys? Yeah. I did nothing different. I killed it. I crushed it. Which, what means, so as a flipper, you have, you can run five rehabs at a time before you're out of budget, right? Or whatever the case may be. Well, now three of those rehabs take an extra 90 days on market. 
and or you have to take price reductions. So if you look at the, uh, where is the price volume, right? Or where's, what am I yeah, looking for? Listing down, prices. It also comes down to how the property is being marketed and how it's being I'm, I got that as well. But then, so the next part, and this I don't believe is a massive factor because when I bought my home, the interest rates were 6%. But now that are whopping 4.6, I think that further end market is getting reserved. How hard are they going to go? Should I? I don't know. And so now they have hesitation. You combine that with this whole political crazy timing, right? My point to all of this is I don't believe we're going to be in some big reception. I don't believe it's doom and gloom for everybody. I do believe the Lions are going to come out and play and they're going to win. And you have to ask yourself if you're going to be a Lion. Do you want to get into this game? I'm going to urge all of you to be in this game because it's created a lifestyle for me that is unimaginable. But if you want to look at the stats, they're not even... The point I'm making verbally, these don't incredibly support it. No one's blown away like, Justin, holy shit, this is nuts. You're not going to see that in the stats, but you're going to see those micro movements where it's just enough that's closed here to open here. There is movement. It's a, literally one percentage point, but it's enough. Your, in, your flip investors got a factor in the longer term hold times because oh, they're using hard money. And so they're beating you up on your margin on the front end so they can protect themselves on the back end. Yeah. And it's a trickle down effect, Absolutely. right? Everything's going to start to, hard money is going to get start getting tighter again because they don't want to be as aggressive. You know how many flips I did with 100% hard money loans? 100% hard money loans. Because A, they trust me after a certain book of business, they're like, okay, I trust you, you know what you're doing. But then secondly, well, if everything's appreciating 10 to 20% every fucking year, they win. All they continue to do is win. And they're very smart. The, borrow, the lenders that I've worked with over the years from RLS to Capital Fund One to Lending Home to, I mean, we've worked with so many, they're smart guys and gals that work there, right? So if they're gonna lend me that kind of money, it's because they understand that there's really not much risk at all. Now is where they're gonna tighten up. So if you are a flipper, you're like, well, shit. Now my hard money is gonna tighten up because they realize it's gonna take a longer sales point. They realize, so part of this, where's the sold list ratio? You can't see it, but the percentage of list to solds drops from 90, I think it was 98% um, of list prices where it sold at. It drops down to like 96.4. Right, but our absorption rate is also going up. It's more stuff on market. So they have to lower the price to get it sold. So this, this pull sold the list. So now instead of getting 97% of what is listed, now you're getting 96. You, and, and there's to, more on market. Many pricing you do, you need to price ahead of market, so to speak. So all this is I'm taking now, they're like, oh, it's got to be here. I'm like, no. Oh. Like, I'm very conservative right. on the list price. Good. Sold, Good. Sold. Especially as a realtor, right? So the point that I'm making is where I, the reason why I'm so emphatic about this is I got crushed in 2012. Because I went through this when the hedge funds were buying like crazy. I was buying like crazy. I was buying from auction. I was crushing it. Then they stopped buying. What happens when they're moving the market at 25% increases? Well, when they stop, it stops moving at 25% increases. Well, the only thing I could do as an investor is project where it was supposed to land so I could sell at that point. Well, when that projection falls short by 25%, you think I made any money? Absolutely not. Now this isn't, I'm not here and this, this, today's meeting is not doom and gloom. I'm just trying to educate you on where I've been hurt in the past and how you can be knowledgeable now so you don't have to make these mistakes. I actually still think you can still rehab and flip, 100%. The key is what we'll continue to talk about through tonight's education is you just need to get the deal at the right price. If something comes at the right price, you can still have that exit strategy. So I don't want the flippers in here to freak out, I want you to be a little bit more conservative is what I'm telling you, because that market still exists. There's always new home buyers. There's always people wanting to buy a home. There are always people that do actually still have money in this world that can put 20% down. So don't freak out. I don't mean that. That's not the intention here. It's you need to be the smartest marketer possible is where I'm going to go with today's education. Because if you are the smartest marketer, if you are the best marketer, to your point, 
you will always have those opportunities, always. But if you are a one trick pony and you rely only on PPC and you rely only on direct mail and you rely only on cold calling or you rely only on networking, you will not win. I am gonna, again, I'm gonna use the line reference because I kinda just feel like that tonight. I'm gonna go eat your lunch. You're just not gonna beat me, nor are you gonna come close. And when you have an opportunity, I'm gonna take it from you. Because I am better at that than you. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I want, I want this to just be a, again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to predict the future here. These are gonna continue to get wider. Every month that we run this meeting, all these numbers, you're gonna to start to see, oh shit, Justin, you are right, it is. Now it also, to fast forward, I don't believe it'll be a collapse. I believe the market is adjusting, okay? So let's just be very clear. I believe it is correcting. I believe it was artificially pumped up for way too long. All the other stats, I, I could have done all this fucking market stats and bored the shit out of you guys tonight. Because all the other stats about how long market has ever appreciated, we've blown all by those records. So it's always just a matter of when, well, here's when. And by the way, it's happening. It's not about to happen. Just the market data that we can get from the MLS hasn't caught up to what is currently happening to investors and homeowners and other people, right? So I want you guys to be very clear. If you win the game of sellers in terms of the front end marketing, you will win this game no matter what because you'll have multiple exit strategies because you'll understand where the market's going. So what does it mean to you? You have to make lower offers, guys and gals. You can't go into this business like you could six months ago and be like, oh, it's worth 200, uh, I'll pay 150 for it. You're gonna get, I mean, A, you won't move it as a wholesale, but you'll get crushed if you try to flip it. The aggressiveness of, I mean, we were buying homes all the way up into 90%. 90% of ARV, that is insane, right? And you guys understand how I do my math, 90% of ARV minus rehab cost minus my wholesale fee, and we were moving them, and we were winning, and we were making 20, 20 grand a deal. It was, I mean guys, it was, I mean, awesome, but totally artificial, totally not reality. So I actually think this is a good thing, if you want me to be very honest with you, I think we were living in a little bit of that delusional shit that I think was artificial. I think some of the hedge funds did it. I think this whole, you know, boosting the economy, the political, I got it. It is what it is. I'm not going political on you. I just, it was artificial. Did you have a question? No, I was gonna make a comment. You guys were the ones that were killing guys like me that I've got protected market in the back end and you guys were paying stupid money mm -hmm. for the house at 90%. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Of as is. Yeah. Correct. As is, but his margin, he's okay at 10, and we're a guy like, I can't take the risk. Right. If the AC is long, there's half, there's half my time. Well, so most of my buyers were taking at 10. They were taking at 10 because they could get it and legitimately get their 10% on their money, right? Because the rehab flippers, and you're agreeing with me, but most people will buy a home if they can make 10%. So if they can sell the home at 40, 400,000 and make 40 grand, they're happy, right? So most people were doing that and they were getting it. Now, obviously Mike was not willing to do that. I would also urge you guys not to be willing to do that, but that was the insanity of what's happened over the last two years, insanity. So who here wants to or is currently a wholesaler? Don't be scared. This again, you're gonna win if you just stick to what I'm gonna to continue to advise you to do here today, but this won't take you out of the game and it won't hurt your gross revenue as long as you are willing to be able to hustle and get the deals done. Your profit margin is gonna shrink. It will be more difficult to work with the seller because by the way, what all this doesn't show, the homeowners typically are the last to ever know or think about or care that the market's actually shifting because they just went on a seven, 10 year run of the world's great again. And they don't know when that's gonna stop. They don't feel it. All they can say is, my next door neighbor sold for $300,000. Well, you don't have a fucking roof on this house, sir. So how do you figure yours is worth $300,000?
right? I mean, that's just the reality. So mixing all offers, which I just was confusing with open door. Yep. And I came with my offer, but I'm stuck with self done. Yeah. Is that what you do? Just let it go, like not fight? No, I fight the fight saying, here's where they're going to fuck you, and I bring them a contract because I was able to get one of their contracts where they nickel and dime you on all their fees. They literally will charge them a convenience fee of some crazy number. It's like. All of it. And then they back them down saying, hey, we can't. So I don't like doing business where you retrade. If I'm making an offer, I'm making an offer I want to buy the home at. I don't want to have to go back and be like, oh, man. Now, does it happen from time to time? Yes. But that's not my agenda. That is their agenda. Here's my offer, but I'm going to take away $27,000 for 10% of you know, um, um, realtor fees. They like have a whole model. Who's ever worked with them? Do you currently still work with them? Oh, yeah. And it's great for you, I would guess. How, how do you work with them? Do you represent them on a buy or on a sell? Uh, buy, so. Right. Um, it's pretty easy because they have a, a pretty good system put together. Mm -hmm. But for getting the listing, yeah, I mean, they're, they're basically charging 6% on realtor's fee. Then there's a 1% on why you're living there because it's convenience fee. Convenience fee, um, that's what they call it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, anything that's going to cost money to fix, they'll 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 do an addendum, say we're going to lower the price. So the time you're out the door, you're anywhere between sixteen to twenty percent from where you were from the approved by selling it with realtor on the market. Yep. And that, uh, my whole point being is, they're great marketers. They which is where I will go with that whole conversation and where I'm going to go for the next year and a half, guys. Offer pads here, but who's coming in? I don't know if that's... Really? They, they are charging realtors, if you want to be a part of them, $1,500 as a sign-up fee, and then you're only making a 1% um, commission. commission. On the buy? On the, on the sell. On the sell? Yeah. Are they coming in to buy? They're, they're, they're having the agents that sign up with them list the home. Hmm. Yeah, but I think the word market correction, that model is going to work. Open door and offer pads may still stay around. But I, 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 I but think purple bricks would take a big hit because their model is structured. Well, Zillow's doing it now. Keller Williams is test marketing the market. And so why are they going to win? They're trying to get in. And wins relative, by the way. Let's not, let's not shortchange ourselves. Why are they able to even do what they do, knowing what was just mentioned here? Have any, by the way, we've lost to Zillow several times very recently. Why do you think we lost? They're in front of the client first. Ish. Yeah. Well, that's part of the answer is it's the fucking name Zillow. They've got the name recognition going in. They're trying to make it comfortable for the seller to say, hey, move when you're ready. Right, and that's what their marketing is, but the, the point kind of is they're Zillow already. Yeah. They already know Zillow. They, Justin yeah. Colby, who the fuck, how the, I'm going with Zillow, right? Because move, we're going to make it seamless, but the reality is they've heard of them, they know them, they're everywhere, they're, again, I'm going to say this again, it goes back to marketing. They're in front more, they're everywhere, they're omnipresent to these people, and rightly so, they've spent a gajillion of dollars to become Zillow, but... That's why they will win for the time period. Can the Zillow model really even work? Because that's a whole nother model that is like, why would you ever sell to them? But we can get there later. With the market stuff, I'm actually targeting most of these lists. Um, but I've noticed my response rate's been up 68% in the last 60 days. Awesome. Direct mail? And RBM. Okay, so we'll get there. Yeah. I like where your head's at, man. You want to start running this for me? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> So let's just go through these in case you guys can or can't see them. First, you're, I mean, unfortunately for the people that do a lot of volume like myself, you have to start with just making lower offers. Otherwise, I won't be able to move the deal, right, as a wholesaler. I'm, I'm only going to think as a wholesaler for you guys right now. My cup is totally in the way. Um, so I have to. So what does that mean? Well, I need to make more fucking offers, don't I? Sorry, I'm a no for those of you who have never seen me speak, I'm very normal. I'm going to cuss. I'm just going to be a normal guy. So I apologize now if it offends you. Hopefully it doesn't. Um, you need to build a better buyer's list. 
this is where I go back to Mike. He's a buyer in the buy and hold market. He will buy more or higher than any flipper because he's not looking at the top end margin. He's saying, hey, I'll buy it for 200 grand as long as I make 1400 bucks a month. There could be no margin. As long as I'm making 1400 bucks a month, Mike's buying it. Well, you need more mics, period. So where are the wholesalers that I, every month I'm getting added to new wholesaler lists by text and by email, where are they picking me up from? MLS. MLS yeah. yeah, if you're a licensed realtor, they'll just scrape the MLS. Yeah, that's what they're doing? Yeah. Or even if you have a listing on Zillow, they'll just have a VA scrape Zillow. Well, do you ever have a listing and then auto populate Zillow or any of these sites? So, so they'll go in and get a virtual assistant. More often than not, yes. But that, that list gets a higher retail price on most prices, though. You know <laughs> yes. Yeah. Are you talking about those yeah, buyers? They're scraping and finding you from the MLS. The, off, the sales price that you're getting pitched is higher than if you start finding your own wholesalers. Poten yes, potentially, potentially. I mean, I've never used that strategy. Like, I wouldn't yeah. just go after agents and market up an extra. Well, yeah, there's one company but, that's new out there that they're taking your wholesale deal that you're sending to me, and then I get their list, and they're bumping the price. Yeah, yeah. Grand. The, the of course. Whole new list every it's a daisy days. chain. I mean, that's. But those are the people that don't have any marketing capital. Right. So if I were to, if someone hired me as a consultant, right, and they said, Justin, I have five dollars a month I can spend on marketing. You say, well, the first thing you want to do is you want to network with people who have deals and go build a great buyers list and say, hey, Mike, can I send your deal out to my buyers? I'll mark it up from your price. Let's say you have it at 150 right, grand. Right, right. That's how I'd advise them because they don't need to go find the seller. You found it already. Now I need to build a great buyers list that you don't already have because you can still sell it to your buyers. Develop your own, because it's that's the gold, truthfully. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, I'll be the first to stand in front of this room and say, I want all of your deals that you can't move or need help with. I guarantee. I don't want to guarantee anything. I'll move them, right? I will be the first part of why I do this is also to build business for myself. Let's. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah, I have a twenty-three thousand person list that I've worked. I have roughly twenty of those people that have bought hundreds of homes for me. That literally are just a call. It's not even an email to them. Hey, dude, you want one to the main street at 150? Right? So I would love for everyone in here to send me those. I mean, that's part of the reason to be a public figure and to have that is to build the business, right? So I'm just being honest with you guys. I would love nothing more than to work with you guys, especially on that. If you have a deal, I'd love to sell it. Um, so let's just keep going here. Building a buyer's list is a massive, massive thing, Mike. And so I just don't want to shortchange that. Because as this market shifts, you need more buy and hold guys. If you can work with any funds, if you can work with Cerebrus, which is a great fund out here that we did 30 deals with in one month. I mean, they're awesome. And they're back and they're heavy. Invitation Homes is back and heavy and they're all back, right? But they can be a pain to work with because there's all that corporate tape. Really focusing on the buy and hold investors, making sure the seller's informed. A lot of people are just going in there and saying, hey, I'll give you 150 grand and the seller is like, well, why? Well, you're not giving them hard proof. Here are three deals that just sold in the last 14 days at 152 grand and 100 blah, blah, blah. Here are five deals that sold at 350,000 right around the corner from you. You want the 350, right? Take a look at their kitchen. Take a look at what they've done, right? All that proof. People are getting lazy these days because the market's been so good. So they're not actually bringing tangible proof to the seller saying, here is why you're getting this offer. Don't be crazy, right? And if they're crazy, then they're crazy and you walk away. But that's, that's how you can help. Go back to bullet point number one, make a lower offer. Don't be lazy with how you're presenting it. Don't just write, you know, our guys, I literally had this meeting this week. They're so fucking good. They literally have a scratch piece of paper. They find some. All right, so this is why we're making a lot. And I'm like, guys, at this point now, you got a more professional let them really understand, bring the MLS listing, bring the closed comp, really hand it to them. Don't just arbitrarily give them numbers, right? That's how you will help yourself and start looking at more of the motivated lists. What are you offering at? Percentage basis, so we were at 90%, we're 
just under 80 right now is what we're getting accepted with like 78 of ARV, right? And backing it all out. But again, that's only getting us, we just did our math, we just were averaging, so the third quarter ended, we averaged just under 14 grand to finish the third quarter. We were at 20. Per deal. Per deal. So it's, so again, to be more and more profitable and keep lower offers. And what does that mean? If I can't get them to approve the, where I need to be because it's too low, I need to make more. I need to find more, which means I need to do what? More marketing. More marketing. You guys are gonna hear this for, because it's so fucking crucial. It's like, it is literally everything. It's everything I believe, I, you kind of see it. Like, this is just marketing and sales. We are not in real estate. Contractors are probably the only people in real estate. Realtors are in fucking contract law, for God's sakes. You guys have 18 pages of paperwork that you gotta read through and make. I mean, no one's really in real estate. You're selling a homeowner to list the home. You're selling a homeowner to buy. We're doing the same shit. We're in marketing and sales, and it's, if you guys can win that, you'll win this, right? Are you door knocking? Yeah, we have a whole street team. Mm -hmm. uh, why are we focusing on these? I think that's pretty obvious. Because the market's shifting, right? So these are the ones that would be considered, you know, motivated. Well, when the market shifts, that motivation starts to go, right? Because everything's gravy, everything's great. Things are going to happen, right? That it won't be all gravy and great. So when you start to focus on their motivation and you align your values, who is here when I talked about, talked about negotiating with the seller? Okay. Uh, if you align your, their values with yours, you will get that deal because you're aligning a solution to what they value. 